Hello everyone. So um, I wanted to start off and give a, a little bit of a view on how to design a vacuum cleaner. Now most of you probably have never designed a vacuum cleaner. I would even venture to say that most of you probably have never even taken apart a vacuum cleaner. And as a result, um, you gotta know where to start. So when it comes to designing a vacuum cleaner, where do we go? Where do we, where do we really begin from? Uh, now, when we did the project with the playground park design, uh, the beginning of it was all right. Let's just do some sketches. Let's come up with some ideas. And really, that's that's kind of where you should start here uh, with this vacuum design. Uh, now, I haven't actually done any sketches. I have a very good, strong idea in my head, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a picture uh, that I found online that is very close to what it is that I want to design. Since I'm kind of a one-man team, um, I don't have to make any decision that is in that respect. I don't have to collaborate. Um, I'm doing everything myself. So uh, we're just going to start with a little bit of a discussion on vacuum cleaners as a whole. So you should have already completed your annotated bibliography. And the first step uh, really that you move into is let's talk about what are the parts of a vacuum cleaner. So you'll notice I just popped into Google went to Google Images and just typed in parts of a vacuum. Okay, there's a lot of really good, uh, really good images here. So this is inside your vacuum cleaner. There's a dust bag. This is kind of a 1990s version of a vacuum cleaner. But you have the intake port, goes through a fan, goes out of the fan, goes into this bag, comes out of the filter, and then is exhausted. That's the process of how it works. Now the nice piece about looking at an image like this is this does give me some terminology that I can use in my own vacuum. I'm going to need to know how to name my own parts. Um, well, that said, I'm not I'm not going to take this as the only vacuum model I look at. I'm also going to look at you know more upright vacuums. So here, um, this one starts getting into individual components: handle release, cord retract, combination brush, handle screw, hose, dirt sensor, um, all of these different really interesting pieces. Um, it doesn't really go into what the components on the inside uh, of the uh, vacuum are. Here, look, there's a switch, there's a bag, there's a drive belt that drives the fan, there's the, uh, the feeder bar, which that's the um, the brush at the, far, uh, the front, your motor housing, which is placed there, which goes on top of your fan. Um, I mean, there's a there's an old school vacuum cleaner. You jump into a a little bit more newer model of a vacuum cleaner. I wonder if I can. Can I increase the size of this? Well, kind of. I can almost read what those words say. Um, here's a motor. You've got your drive belts. You've got your your uh, brush. Here, there's a bag on the inside. There's a filter in here. There's a switch. Here's your motor, here's your cover, here's your hose. Okay, so we're starting to see some some similarity in parts here. I'm gonna zoom back out. I'll go ahead and reset my zoom. Um, and go look at a a different model, and this one's even smaller. Nice. Um, and that's only a 200 by 130 pixel image. But what we're seeing is we're seeing some very consistent trends in how pieces are named. Uh, so you should have already done a lot of this. Awesome. That's This sits in the background. I'm not going to jump into um, really the steps to designing anything. Okay, We've talked about the four-step engineering design process, uh, but we haven't really talked about how to, how to flesh out an idea. How do you take an idea and make it useful? Well, the most foundational aspects of, of usability is that you need to have functional components. You are designing something to perform a function to do something, therefore it's got to have functional components. For a hammer, the functional component is the hammer hat. For, uh, uh, for a car, a functional component would be like an engine or a wheel or a seat. Now, things that actually do specific features that allow you to, to have some functionality on the device. Okay. So we're going to identify the functional components. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take these functional components and then combine them. And there's going to be some pieces that are required to combine the functional components together. Um, some, sometimes it's just to house them. Sometimes it's actually power them. Sometimes it's 
a, a lot of different things. And lastly, the last piece is you also need to add components for constraints for your system here. Um, you know, we don't we deal with a world where uh, you don't just have raw components. If your phone was very raw, uh, this wouldn't have a case on it at all. You'd you'd have a screen, which that's the input device, and then the back of the device would just be all of your your different microchips and everything. And so that it, it kind of ignores the constraints and focuses on functionality. The problem is that your constraints of your system is it'll have to stay together. It'll have to move as one unit. Um, those are kind of intrinsic constraints that get put into your system as a part of the design process. And so you actually need physical components to give those constraints to you. And sometimes those physical constraints, they do reduce the functionality of your device. Um, so usually you start here, you get this down well, you come to here, you get them to connect well, and then you finish to make a complete design. So. Um, that's kind of how we're, uh, we're going to be playing this. Um, so now what I've decided to say is I want this to be a portable and wireless vacuum. What I'm going to be doing for my project is I'm actually going to be building a, a little handheld vacuum and I'm, I'm going to be doing the modeling for it and doing the design process for it. Um, this would very easily translate into making a shop vac, it would very easily translate into making uh, a, a floor vacuum, it would very easily translate into making a Roomba. Uh, I, I mean, all of these different types of things, the principles are still there. Even looking at, going back and looking at the, uh, the different types of vacuums, they all have the same kinds of pieces. And all we're doing is we're just going to take those pieces and plug them in in different ways. So, identifying this, we're, we're going to first start out with a functional component. So what does a vacuum do? Well, it sucks. It stores uh, the debris. It then um, cleans the air that it removes, removes dust particulates, uh, and then it it, uh, it actively powers uh, the suction. Okay, so the fan and the motor go together to create the functional components to actually cause suction to happen. The filter prevents. Well, the filter and the reservoir both store and prevent that. Uh, that door or that dust from entering the atmosphere again okay then the second piece of this how do we connect the functional components together well here we're gonna have a hose for my system I'm gonna have a battery uh, if you have a power a corded vacuum you won't need to have a battery um, so in that case then you'll have a cord that power cord will actually be one of the critical pieces that goes from your motor to your wall or goes through a power control system uh, to your motor and then to your switch and to your wall um, but that is that is necessary to operate the motor a motor cannot operate without it you're gonna need some piping because you have to use some kind of piping mechanism to get the fan output to go to the reservoir again uh, you don't have a real functional vacuum without the piping uh, otherwise you, you just have a fan that blows air great uh, that's a fan that's not a vacuum a fan that leads to a reservoir uh, where they can hold your dust that is a vacuum so that's why the piping is a necessary critical feature you also have to have an intake and an out exhaust the air has to come in and the air has to go out um, you're not blowing up a balloon um, I, I'm sure you could try to design a vacuum that way but here I'm just saying that the exhaust is necessary because otherwise you have to have a continuously growing uh, reservoir and I don't really like that idea. So I am making the intake and the exhaust be necessary components here. Um, lastly, you have your constraint components. These are components that fulfill the wholeness of the design that allow the design to be what it is. So here my design is not just a vacuum system, it's a vacuum system is all of these components maybe instead of a battery having a power element or all of those components that's that's pretty much what defines a vacuum now what defines a personal vacuum a, a portable vacuum and what does, does uh, defines a uh, vacuum that that is cordless uh, is going to come from these features so here it's going to have some kind of a body that unifies it together it's all going to be in one unit um, and it's going to have to have handles that can be carried it's also going to have, have an on switch. This isn't a vacuum that runs all the time. 
This is a vacuum that you want to be able to turn on and off as you wish. Uh, and lastly, because this is going to have to be uh, a wireless system, it will have to be charged somehow. Uh, otherwise, this is a one-use system. <laughs> I bought this from the store, pre-charged. All right, it's done. Throw away, buy a new one. Um, so the charging port is actually a critical uh, constraint component that allows it to be reusable. Uh, so here it's a reusable, portable, all-in-one vacuum that is controllable. Okay, Each one of those components adds to the definition of what makes this system unique and what it is that I'm trying to build. Now, again, you don't have to do any of these four or really this uh, battery piece. You don't have to do any of those. Those can all be different for your system. I'm not going to tell you how to design your system. That's up for you. You do have to be able to justify what it is that you want out of your system though, and why it is that you made it that way. So to start, you start with your functional components. You have to identify your functional components. You have to get them to perform the way that you want them to, really, before you even start connecting them together. So I'm going to start by making these four things. And then I'm going to combine them into this. And once I've combined them into this, I have a full system. Then I'm going to throw a body on it, throw a handle on the body, find a place for an on switch, and establish a method of charging the battery through a charging port. So that's going to be my process. Today I'm going to start with just defining and just uh, designing a fan blade because uh, we do have to start one piece at a time. So I'll produce a video today on the fan blade. I'll produce an, uh, my next video will be uh, more geared towards well, whatever the next component was. Uh, a reservoir. Uh, we'll, we'll define a reservoir. And we can always make adjustments later. The nice piece about SolidWorks is that it can be adjusted later. Uh, you, you can make those adjustments as time passes. And we will be. Your first design is never a pretty one. The idea with SolidWorks is you want to be able to make multiple iterations. So my goal here, I'm just going to make something functional. I'm going to put those functional items together, make it work. Okay? And you should really take this approach too. So we'll start by going creating a brand new part so here starting a new part uh, i'm going to make a solid fan blade um, now as this is initiating i'm going to go in and i'm going to do some research on types of fan blades uh, now here there's centrifugal uh, fan blades these ones they operate by they suck air in through uh, the middle of this and then it, it is ejected out of this centrifugal fan at a very high speed, um, let's see, like, like this, it's like a blower, okay? Air comes in the center, it is then propelled very quickly out of here and shot out of, of, the, uh, out of this outlet to the fan, and so that's how it, it creates suction. It sucks things into this fan blade. Um, SolidWorks hates the fact that I'm using three different programs at the same time. Deal with it. Um, there are some other fan blades that are available. You can have a propeller fan blade. You can have a compressor fan blade. You can have your centrifugal fan blade. Uh, you can have an axial fan. Um, there are some very interesting uh, rotary fan blades. Uh, Dyson's been doing a lot with, with interesting types of fan blades. Here, fan blades and propellers. Awesome. Blower fans. Uh, ceiling fans i mean we could really do anything to to force an air movement um but and here yeah here's a this is more of like a jet uh fan um awesome all of those features are are very relevant very useful can be done easily it's good times i'm gonna go ahead and close that out so now my goal here is, oh, and I'm also going to close this one out. Just SolidWorks. Thank you. SolidWorks is uh, freaking out. It doesn't like that I'm also using the streaming software. Um, at least now it's down to low. So again, here's how we start. We start with a sketch. Go into a sketch. Um, again, I have a weird desire to always sketch on the top plane. I don't know why. Um, specifically here though I want my fan to spin this way 
So I'm going to design it this way. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a central axis for all of my fan blades to be mounted to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a centrifugal fan blade. Um, that's kind of my goal. Uh, now there are a number of ways of doing it. You can create a radial fan. That's kind of a lazy way of doing it. I want to have a little bit of curved fan blades to them because I think that would be interesting. Um, so, but I got to start with a central shaft. So my central shaft, plug it into the, the origin. This is going to be the center of my fan. Oh, come on. And then I'm just going to draw a circle around that. I'll stop drawing a circle. I'll dimension this. I want this to be uh, maybe about an inch in diameter. So I'll type 1, enter, and when I do that it'll try to adjust, but it'll come back and say, okay, that's a diameter of 1 inch. I'm now going to exit my sketch. So I click exit sketch up here at the top left, and when I do that I just have a circle. Uh, now I'm going to do an extruded boss base. Get into this, and uh, let's see, I'm going to make it be 3 inches tall. Hit enter, hit good. So it's a 3 inch tall fan blade where the origin is at the center of the circle on the bottom. Awesome. Okay, now uh, because I'm going to have these be a little bit helical, uh, I'm going to be looking to make a curve. So I'm in the Features tab right now. I'm going to go into this Curve section, and I'm going to create a helix. Okay, why am I making a helix? Well, you'll see. So here it asks for select a plane or select a sketch that contains a single circle. Um, here I don't have a sketch that contains a single circle. I could have created that. I'm going to go ahead and start by making a plane. So again, I'm going to sketch on the top plane, so I'll select the top plane. I'm going to click on this, which will bring me over the top of it. And then I'm going to sketch a circle. Okay. Uh, now for my circle, I want it to be pretty wide. Um, here, the outer extremities of my fan, I want it to be uh, maybe a 6 inch diameter fan. So I'll go ahead and throw smart dimension on this, pick the other edge of the circle, and set this to be a 6 inch diameter fan. It would be a pretty powerful fan. Um, not bad. We'll have to find, find space to fit it, but oh well. We'll make it work for now. So now I've got my 6 inch fan. I'll hit exit sketch. I've got my circle in place. This is the helix that I would like to have. So, hit exit sketch. Now since I've already been working in the helix spiral, I started the sketch doing the helix spiral, it will automatically jump into the helix spiral one. You can set the circle before doing this. Um, now I'm going to hold down the center mouse key and drag, which is going to give me a 3D perspective view of how my helix is going to look. Assuming that it doesn't crash my computer. <laughs> Not happy. There it is. So that's what my sketch looks like right now. Um, it's kind of a nice curve. Uh, here, if I, if I go to a side view, it shows me... It's curved about that much. It's curved about 180 degrees by the time it hits the top of, uh, of that shaft. Well, I don't really want a fan blade that curves 180 degrees throughout the fan blade. I actually want this to be much, uh, much less curved, if that makes any sense. Um, so I'm going to have my pitch be a lot higher. I'm going, to, I'm going to set this at uh, uh, 12 inches. Okay, so now it only curves, I don't know, maybe about 90 degrees. That's still even a little bit much. I'm going to set this to 24 inches. Okay, so 
It's got a really, really, really shallow pitch, but that's going to kind of be the profile of what I want for my helix. Okay. Um, and now I'm also going to set this because I don't want it to go up 24 inches. I really only want it to go up, what is it, 3 inches? So here, I'm going to set this at 0 0.125 because I only want it to go up to the top right there. So that's my helix. I've, I've identified a helix. I've shrunk it down so that it's the same height as this center here. Um, and then I'll hit OK. And I've got, I've got this helical curve. Okay. So this helix is defined by both this circle and by this line. Now, my next step is I have to draw a fan blade itself. So I'm going to go to a sketch and do a brand new sketch. Once again, praying at every step that my computer does not just absolutely die. Okay, so I'm going to sketch on the top plane again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a shape that I want to extrude along that helix. And I'm not fancy. You could make curved blades. You could make them nice and sweet and awesome. Well done. I'm drawing a box. <laughs> because because uh, let's go fam I am not that exciting of a person now you know my best practices for how I draw things first before I put any dimensions in I'm gonna add some relations okay so right now I've got all four of these lines selected I don't want any of these lines selected so I will delete out all of them what I do want to do is I want to constrain this midpoint here with the origin I want those to be horizontal to each other. All right, done. Okay, that's about the only relation that I can have. This allows me to scoot this in, scoot this out. Um, the only other thing I guess I could do is try to select uh, this point here. I'm gonna delete this, delete this. I want this point here. Oh, maybe it'll give me a point. Maybe not. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to give me a point. I might be able to select that point right here and then hit Add Relation. Oh, it still hasn't recognized that I selected the point. Yep, okay. Well, never mind. Nice try. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this center point of this. I want that to be uh, three inches away because I, I said already I wanted to have a six inch diameter helix. So I'm going to set this at three, hit enter. And there we go. Uh, now the only things that I need to do is I do need to give some dimensions to this rotor blade. So. Here, I want my rotor blade to be two inches wide. So I'm going to set this at two. And as far as thickness goes, I want it to be thick with like only one C. So we're just going to make this be a quarter of an inch wide. Sufficiently thick, but you know, only one C. And what this will do is this will fully define my entire rotor blade. Okay drawn a square I did put it in the center of this helix that's being drawn so that I can exit this sketch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this rectangle along that helix okay this is called a swept boss base so I'm going to go up here and click on swept boss base in the features tab and when I do click on that um, you'll notice that here this is the profile that's being that is uh, being swept I actually do want that to be sketch three. That was the rectangle I drew. And here, I want this to be the helix. So I'm gonna select that, and now I can kinda look around and see, okay, that's that's a pretty awesome look right there. I, I think that's a hot fan blade. Woo! That's, that's, that's beautiful. So I'll go ahead and hit yes. And there we go. Now I have 
a fan blade that's operating at kind of a helix. It's, it's an interesting look, making SolidWorks hate my computer. But, I mean, there we go. There's one of the fan blades. But wait, we're, we need more than one fan blade. Well, yes, we do. Um, so here's the, the footprint of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire feature, which is selected with sweep one. And I'm going to do, click this down arrow from the linear pattern. I'm going to create a circular pattern. This is going to allow me to copy this feature in multiple places. So you'll notice that my features and faces sweep one. The direction, what I'm going to do is, um, this is, uh, let's see. I need an axis. Okay, so before I can do this circular pattern, I need to establish an axis. Um, oh, I've already got an axis. It's the axis that is the center line of this tube. So that's kind of helpful. If you wanted to, you could draw an axis yourself. Go into reference geometry, create an axis. Here, because my origin is the center of this circle, um, I can do two planes. And then basically just go in here and select the front plane and the right plane. front plane, right plane, and that'll create the axis right there. That's one way of doing it. I've actually already got an axis there. It's just not visible. So I'm going to show you a quick, quick, uh, dirty feature. I'm going to go to view, um, display, and nope, it's hide show. My bad. View, hide show, and then click on temporary axis. Okay, so here I can shut off or turn on everything that's being shown here. Uh, planes are getting in the way. You can shut all of your planes off at once. Points are getting in the way. Axes are getting in the way. Uh, here, temporary axes are axes that are produced by extruding circles or extruding along um, some kind of an axis. So uh, here, now this axis is visible because I just turned on temporary axes. You can turn it off later. Just again, go to view hide show, and you would shut off the temporary axis. So, but now that I have this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and say, all right, I want a circular pattern. I'm gonna select sweep one again. So here, features and faces, selecting sweep one, or you could just click on it. Direction one, I'm gonna click on this axis that I have, so it'll be going around this axis. I don't want it to do 15 degrees, I want it to do 360 degrees. I hit enter, it'll give me an update. And right now it's only trying to create. Oh, enter a number. Here, I'm going to click on equal spacing. So here are 360 degrees. If you do instant spacing, you can do every 15 degrees, create one. I prefer equal spacing because that allows me to identify how many blades I want in a full circle. Um, so here I've got three in a full circle. Uh, let's try, uh, let's try eight. Okay, now eight in a circle, it does, I don't know how much I like that because there's almost no space <laughs> for, you know, the fan blades. Oh, and I forgot to do one thing. This fan blade is curled inward, which means that it forms a circle, but I actually want to rotate it 90 degrees. So how would you rotate a feature 90 degrees well what we do here is we go up and we pick let's see I think it's in um, let's see I'm not remembering how to do this now great good job Kale um, oh it's like a modify I don't remember. Huh. I feel like I should know this. Chamfer fillet. This one is cut feature. So different types of patterns. Different types of reference geometries. Oh, that's weird. Um, I don't think it's in 
Yeah, I don't know if there's any statues. Well, that's interesting. Here you can click on the Evaluate tab and find different uh, features that allow you to understand what these are. I don't know how to rotate one of the one of the pieces you're using. That's interesting. Oh. All right. Well, learn something. Um. I'm going to have to go back into the sweep, modify my sketch. So I'll click on this, click on edit sketch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to change the dimensions on these two, which will force it to be turned 90 degrees. So this is going to be two. This here is going to be 0 0.25. Hit enter, exit sketch. Okay, it'll then rebuild the system like this and it's basically like I just turned it 90 degrees. I don't know why I didn't do that from the beginning. I mean, whatever. So now I'm going to take this and I am going to do, finally, do the circular pattern. I'm going to select sweep one again. Have it go about the circles here. You can go grab it out of the part tree, which I prefer to do. But you can also just click on it directly. Um, and then I'm going to check direction. Pick this axis, hit equal spacing, and I want it to be eight of them. Okay, it'll update, and there are my fan blades. Okay, they look kind of pretty. It's growing on me. All right, so I'll hit yes, and now I have eight total fan blades that exist. Only merging features. Okay, so this is going to want me to merge all of these together. Interesting. Huh. Yes, I want them to merge, but I guess because there's no contact point for them to merge to, I may actually have to create a circle, kind of a, a ring that connects all of these uh, before, before I can actually do the circular pattern. We'll see. Because it's going to come in, yeah, it's going to come in as only one piece, and it's like, wait a minute, all these pieces are just floating in space. So I can't quite do that yet. So I'll just do something else. Uh, I'm going to go do another sketch. Create a sketch. I'll draw on the bottom of this. Bottom of the circle. Bing. And uh, I'll click, I'll get normal to it. There we go. And then I want a circle that goes from here. And this is a two inch. So this should be at four inch because it's three inches to here. And then since this is two inches, it'll be an inch out extra. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a circle. Um, and then I'll do, I'll just do an add relation and say this point here this this edge here and this circle i want them to be connected okay and then i'll hit yes okay that's nice it still doesn't like it does it oh it's because i can rotate the circle around oh that's weird oh well Oh no, it's it's Floyd Point. <laughs> I'm just I'm just being interesting. I'm being extra today. So what I'll do is I'll extrude the circle downward, and then I'll provide a mounting place for all of my fan blades. I'll go back into feature, extrude boss base. This feature, I'm gonna make sure that it's extruding in the right direction. I only need this to be like a quarter of an inch. I don't need to be three inches. 0.25. So like a quarter of an inch. And what this will do is this will serve as a merging plate so that all of my parts can have something to be mounted to, to merge to. Um, and there we go. 
now, now I should be able to do my circular pattern. So I've got my sweep selected, I've got my axis built, I have a place for them to be mounted to, I've got my sweep that shows up in features and faces. I'll pick this, set this to equal spacing, pick eight of them, hit yes. And there we go, there's my fan. Um, now what I can do is I can put this same circle on top. I don't really want to. I'm actually going to put a ring up here so that it has the ability to suck in air from this direction and then it'll output it through the fan blades. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to put a ring on top. So we'll do sketch, sketch, do it from the center hub. And uh, then, well, I guess before I do anything, I should probably orient my axes. So I'll select normal two, select to normal two, draw a circle from the origin. Have that one go outward. And then I'll also draw another circle. And I'm going to put it on the inside. Okay, I'll hit escape to get out of the circle command. And then I'm going to add some relations. So here, I'll pick this circle. And then I'll pick this circle. Whoa, I've got two of them. Okay, there we go. And then I'll have these be tangent. What that'll do is it'll force that one to be on the outside. I'll hit yes. And then I will add another relation and pick, oh, nope, I don't want your two to be selected still. I'll pick this line here and this line here and have them be tangent and hit yes. Now my sketch will be fully defined. So I can hit exit sketch. And now if I pan a little bit, you can see I just drew two circles. <laughs> it's nothing fantastic. I didn't have to put any dimensions because I oriented it relative to these fan blades that are already existing. The nice piece about that is if I change the diameter, the dimensions of those fan blades, this circle will also adjust. Um, so that's good. So I'll go ahead and do a extruded boss base. I'm just going to make this center piece here, which it automatically identifies because it's an enclosed space, I will just have it extrude outward this direction by 0.25 inches. Okay, so my whole thing is three and a half inches tall at this point. But now I have an inlet for my fan, I have a central axis for my fan, and I have the fan blades. I'll have to come up with some kind of a piping and a housing for this fan, uh, but I'm going to do that in another uh, video. So right now I have my fan blade. I'm happy with my fan blade. This was this would print as one piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. Now, good practice anytime you make SolidWorks designs is that you are going to want to save every single one of your parts and assemblies into into a dedicated folder. So here, I'm going to call this vacuum. And then inside of the vacuum folder, I'm going to create another folder because I, I might have to do a couple of iterations. This will be VC1. Okay. And then I'll, I don't know, maybe give it a start date. Um, 4 1 2022. Okay. So vacuum one design, here's a date on it. So I started working on this design and on that date. And now I can jump in here and call this fan and save it inside of this folder. I'm going to want to save all of my parts and assembly files in this folder so that SolidWorks knows how to go and find the other parts that are referenced. And that's it. I've started by designing a fan. Now, for those of you who uh, are working in groups and you want to assign people to do multiple parts at a time, what I would suggest that you do is have one person build the fan, uh, have another person in here, I'm going to go jump into um, Let's have one person build the fan, have one person build the reservoir, have one person design the filter, and have one person design the motor. Um, all four of those are going to be kind of important, and I'm going to be putting out these videos as fast as I can over the coming week uh, so that you can kind of see my process of how I pick all of those components. Um, 
you will have to have a lot of discussions to make sure that the sizing of your fan, your reservoir, your filter, and your motor are appropriate to your group. So whoever your project manager is, make sure that you're monitoring those pieces and the dimensions of those pieces uh, as they're being constructed. Well, that's all I have for you today. So 